Hey everyone, welcome back to TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com. Again, that website address for you is TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com. This is a video for the research clinics out there, the ones doing the studies, the ones doing the clinical trials, specifically the people in charge of managing the clinical trials and maybe billing or contracts and budgets, things like that. Just a little pointers for you guys. Um, as I learn things, as I pick up on things, because I do this every day with my company, South Coast Clinical Trials, um, you will see, and whatever I, you'll see me doing a lot of videos where, I, first of all, I haven't heard anyone talk about these things. That's why I'm doing it, because I know that if I'm looking for this kind of information online and I can't find it, I know there's people out there in the same situation. So as I pick up things, as I learn things, as I'm noticing trends, I'm going to start making these videos. So I'm taking a little break from my ebook, uh, The Business of Clinical Trials Demystified, the one I'm writing with my co-author, Sarah Siegler. Shout out to Sarah Siegler. She's also one of our Clinical Trial Guru producers. Stay tuned for that ebook. It's coming out in September on Kindle. It'll be 99 cents. We're going to demystify clinical trials and the business behind it, like the funding, how, how private clinical trials are funded, how private clinical trials are funded, um, how academic clinical trials are funded, like from the universities, and how investigator-initiated research is funded, like doctors do actually doing their own studies um, outside of any drug companies. Then we're also going to talk about the NIH, the National Institute of Health, things like that. It's a very interesting book. It's coming together very nicely. But I'm going off on a tangent here. Um, trends. Something I noticed for the research clinics out there. A uh, couple things. Number one, not every contract will invo will allow you to. Or not. Let me take that back. Not every contract that you have for your studies have built-in payments for transportation, study participant transportation. In the type of trials I do, psychiatry, our study participants tend to not have their own vehicles. So they don't drive themselves in. They either take a bus, take a cab, or we have to pick them up. And then we, as my company, has to pay for that. And in Southern California, this is costly. We've got some study participants coming from as far as like 30 miles away, one way. So we pay our drivers 60 bucks on average for the round trip, sometimes more. And for some studies, this is not build, built into the budget. We have to invoice for those costs. Don't get behind on invoicing. You've got to invoice regularly because these costs add up. I just did a whole bunch of invoices the other day for about six months' worth of transportation for one study. And it was like $6,000. So don't get behind on that, especially if you have, you're have you at a clinic with cash flow issues, because most of us are right now. Don't forget to bill for transportation costs for the studies that don't have that already built into the budget. Second thing, watch out for those sub-studies, like the PK studies, um, especially the PK studies. I'm doing a couple studies right now with PK sub-studies which is totally voluntary for the study participant. But for the research clinics out there, you got to really make sure that you're getting compensated fairly for that stuff because upon first glance, you don't really think about it. But for this PK sub-study, it's optional, completely optional from the study. It's completely optional from the main study for the study participants, but they can join if they want. And it doesn't really benefit them in any way it just helps the drug company understand the pharmacokinetics of the drug better. Um, for this particular study, they don't reimburse the patient for joining the sub-study. So, they, number one, they don't get paid. Number two, the research clinic only gets paid like $80 or something ridiculous like that. I looked through the budget. Number three, it's actually a lot of work involved for this PK sub-study. The, the patient has to, first of all, you as the research clinic have to know that who's, who's in the sub-study and who's not. That takes some effort. Then you got to make sure that the ones who are in the sub-study come in on an extra day 
to the clinic and get three additional blood draws. They get one like two hours after their first dose, then they get another blood draw four hours after their first dose, and then they get another blood draw 24 hours after their first dose. So you see how you can get, if you don't really pay attention and know what you're doing, you can actually sign up for something that's really has no benefit to the patient and has no benefit to the site. So be really careful about these sub-studies. Um, that's all I'm going to say because they're oftentimes not worth your time or your efforts, nor are they beneficial to your study participants because they got to come in. Nobody likes to get their blood drawn. They get three extra blood draws in one day, two extra visits to the clinic, and they don't get compensated for it. So, And this caught my study participants off guard, even though we went through the consent process with them. When it was time for them to do their PK sub-study, they withdrew consent from that particular sub-study because they did not understand that they um, had to do all this extra stuff they, and when they were reminded about it they chose not to um, so watch out for that and finally what a lot of people don't know especially this is especially helpful for the smaller research clinics is sometimes these drug companies they want like fancy equipment like they want like refrigerated centrifuges they want special ECGs they want um, special like blood pressure machines and for the small clinics you may not have these things well did you know that most sponsors if you bring it up to them if you're a good sign if you've been doing well for them if you've enrolled patients and you you have quality work and all that good stuff they will give you these things they will let you borrow them for the study and then return it when the study's over so that means you get to keep these excellent equipment for the duration of the study. You, I bet you did not know that. If they don't do that, they will reimburse you for purchasing this equipment. But you have to negotiate this stuff. You have to let them know. Otherwise, they won't do it. I mean, they, they have no idea that what you need. You have to really let them know what you want. So those are just some things I found that you might, be, uh, that you might get some uh, benefit from for the research clinics out there. Finally, I want to thank all of our social media people out there. I want to do the social media shout-outs right now. So follow me on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. Facebook especially. Go to facebook.com slash South Coast Clinical Trials. And I post things like the next people to comment, get shamelessly promoted on our blog. So let me go to the Facebook people, the Facebook social media people for this week. Again, facebook.com slash South Coast Clinical Trials. Thank you to Rahul Sharma from India. Um, thank you to... Jessica Riley, our newest member on there. We're up to 724 likes, so keep it up, guys. We need you guys to click like and follow all my videos there. And I also put my dad's videos there from the Psych Guru. So if you're interested in psychiatry as an added bonus, you get that stuff, like all the site guru stuff and you get like exclusive things from the clinical trials guru on there too things i don't post anywhere else so go to facebook.com slash south coast clinical trials um let's see there was one more person on the facebook page this week uh here we go i mentioned rahul sharma I mentioned Jessica Riley. Thank you guys for liking. Biofarm Systems. Thank you as well. It looks like they specialize in implementation, integration, upgrade, migration, and hosting of Oracle's clinical and safety applications. Thank you guys for liking us and thank you for following us on the Facebook fan page. And there's a couple from Google Plus. Sarkis Delakia. Thank you very much. Sarkis is from Clismap. He's got a very innovative way to search for clinical trials, so check him out. Now, finally, I want to give a shout-out to our Guru producers. These are people who support the Clinical Trials Guru formally. They're show producers. They get their own page on our site. I'm going for scarcity. I'm only accepting 100 right now. I have 7 So it's 99 bucks. You get to be a show producer. What are you waiting for? I mean, that's like a Starbucks budget. 
So thank you to Sarah Siegler, who I mentioned already, Resolve Research Solutions, PTNR, all the way in the Netherlands. Thank you to Erd Heart Clinical Trials, Accurate Clinical Trials, and um, thank you to Patrick Stone as well. And I love to see you guys become guru producers and get promoted like crazy in every video. And just support our show. Support my show. Thank you very much. This is Dan from TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com. Take care.